Hi, my name is Ali Ray. I use they them pronouns and I am now 152 days sober from alcohol. Um, I don't look very good right now. I'm not feeling good. Um, so today does actually have more context than the last two days, which have just been essentially, I'm sorry, I don't know what I'm doing on this video blog thing. Um, I do have a kind of important topic for me to talk about. So when I was a drunk, I always felt like I was sick. Um, there would be issues with my stomach, mental health wise, feeling weak, dizzy, nauseous, and I never knew if it was real or not. And by real, I mean that I doubted myself a lot with these physical symptoms because I always thought that I was just drunk. Um, I didn't ever know if I was drunk or if I was sick. Um, essentially, I would call out sick all the time from work, but I never knew if I was lying or not, so it didn't sound very authentic. Along with mental health things, I never knew if I actually had anxiety or if something was just going on with my brain. I didn't know if I was dying, if my anxiety or perception of things were real. I've been so grateful that in my sobriety, I've learned that I have a lot less heavy mental illness stuff than I thought. I still have complex PTSD. I still have major trauma. I was abused from the time I was a baby um, into my mid twenties. So there's a lot I need to work with. But now it seems manageable, now it seems coping skills, regular therapy, being honest and mindful with myself have been very helpful. I don't have the level of social anxiety I had. I don't hear voices like I thought I did. I don't actually slip through reality. I just was constantly spinning in my head because I was not able to see which perceptions were objective and which were just kind of my brain not really feeling good. So. One of the major things that has been great to find out in my sobriety is I was finally diagnosed with being on the autism spectrum when I was in treatment this year in 2018. That diagnosis kind of hit me weirdly because I've been acting since I was eight years old and I always thought that I was a really extroverted or attentive kid, but now that I look back, I was training myself a lot of the time. The trauma that I involved that I was involved in as a child involved me a lot of me acting. So I would force myself to look people in the eye because I didn't want to get hit or in trouble and because I wanted to appear normal. And my stuff about not really knowing how social complexes work, I thought that was all trauma just because I wasn't raised very well. I was put in situations where I was left alone a lot. Some of my cognitive abilities were a little skewed because of the level of trauma that I was put through as a young kid. But a lot more would be, would have been understandable if I had known that I was on the spectrum the whole time. So that's been part of it too, is that just in general, sensory stuff, being overwhelmed with people, all piled with not feeling good, I never know, I never knew what was legitimate and what was not. And then I have today's like today. Like I said previously, every day has to matter in recovery. There are very few days that I allow myself to just kind of sit and chill anymore. I try to keep my, my schedule busy. Even though I'm not currently working part-time, I want to integrate that in my schedule, schedule eventually. But just in general, going to sobriety meetings, keeping my place clean, um, doing art, improv has been huge in terms of commitments, um, therapy, case management, all that stuff. I pretty much have done something productive long-term for my life every day and today definitely counted. I woke up not feeling very good. Um, something, has been going on, something has been going on with my stomach for the last few days. I don't know, sorry about this. Um, I don't know if I ate something that I don't agree with. I've been eating pretty healthy, sorry. And I've kind of slipped with that the last few days, but I feel like I started to not feel good before I started allowing myself to eat some treats. Uh, I also have PMDD or premenstrual dysphoric disorder which means that the week or two before I had my period, my body goes all out of whack. Uh, I do get nauseous, I do get tired, my stomach gets weird. Certain foods are better than others. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just overwhelmed by thinking about it all. Um, I also am genetically Ashkenazi Jewish, and there's something called the curse that we have, which is just generally, sometimes our bodies just freak out, sometimes we just feel nauseous or the other digestive problem thing goes on all day. And I've been dealing with that too. 
So I don't know today if I've had cramps, if I was just tired, if I was, if there's actually a virus going on, if this has something to do with my genetics being silly. I've had a pretty good stomach since I've been in recovery. And honestly, the days that I haven't felt good, the days that I have thrown up sober, I felt really cheated because I had this idea in my head that once I got sober, all the le weird little illnesses I experienced throughout the year would just be gone. I would be incredibly healthy, my immune system could go up. For those who are new in recovery, just so you know, that's a lie. You will get weird random illnesses all the effing time. And it has nothing to do with whether or not you're being proactive with your health, whether or not you're getting enough exercise, you're eating the fruits or vegetables, you're getting enough rest. I have been at like the peak of my game in terms of mindfulness, in terms of taking care of myself, all of that, taking a buttload of vitamins every day. And I have still gotten painfully, weirdly sick for random episodes. And people used to shame me when I was an alcoholic and say, well, if you weren't an alcoholic, then you wouldn't get sick. Well, I'm still getting sick and the people who were unproductive and not very helpful in saying those things have thought that I'm drinking again because of how frequently and how weird my sicknesses have been. Anyway, screw those people though. So right now, I have the stomach thing going on and I broke my foot. I've never broken a muscle before. I've never broken a muscle. I've never broken a bone before. And this is a pretty serious cast. This is six to eight weeks. I always thought that I would definitely break a bone, but I would be wasted, didn't know how I did it, and would kind of just let it be. That I would be irresponsible with it being broken and healing. Essentially, if anything physical went wrong with my body, I would just kind of leave it, and I've been lucky up until this point. Um, so I was dealing with all that today, and still, I had a pretty productive, meaningful day. Um, a day where I feel pretty proud of myself. I met with my case manager and we worked on social security stuff, we set up housing, we um, we were working on getting a laptop and, and other utilities for my apartment and I have gender dysphoria so we talked about the eventual scheduling of um, finding a good top surgery surgeon or some sort of gender clinic in Minneapolis. These are all things that I've been wanting to do for years and suddenly it's easy to just file for what you need, to ask for what you need, to sit down with someone who knows what they're doing, knows how to navigate the system. And occasionally I had to get up to run to the bathroom, and that's not great with a broken foot, but I still was there. I was still able to go through the meeting. I got back, and my friend V came and picked me up, and we went on errands. I was kind of hoping that the stuff with my stomach would go away. I bought Pepto-Bismol, and I had an episode <laughs> in the paint store, they were getting um, paint for their apartment, they were doing a bunch of projects. And I played another game, which was, would this terrible experience that I'm physically feeling right now be better if I were drunk? At that moment, I was feeling nauseous, weak, dizzy. Again, I didn't know if it was premenstrual stuff, or if it was my stomach, or what the F was going on. I just didn't really feel good and didn't know what side of my body, what part of my body was going to have to um, make it quick to the bathroom. And of course I'm around a bunch of people and semi-hardware stores already kind of gross me out and bore the hell out of me. So one of the games I used to, again, was, as I was saying, one of the games I used to play is um, would this be better, the experience be better drunk? And unfortunately I have had sicknesses throughout the year that would have, I'm going to be honest right now, would have been totally better drunk. Uh, the last sickness I had was about two weeks ago. As I said, they're pretty frequent how I don't feel good. I had acute phlegmocytis or something like that. It was essentially like really bad sore throat and really red sore throat. And it was so painful, like swallowing hurt. It felt like strep. I couldn't eat because everything felt like I was like stabbing myself as I was swallowing. And just in general, sitting there watching TV, it just hurt. It just hurt. Uh, I got on enough ibuprofen so it was less bad, but in those moments I thought, yeah, honestly, this would feel better drunk. My oldest sister, who's not been a super good influence in my life, used to aid me in that growing up. I used to get really bad sore throats all the time in high school. I think it was partly because I was a singer and doing a lot of singing auditions. So I would get nervous and that would be the organ that, I that I'd focus on the most, so that would be the one, of course, with bad luck, that would get sick. 
and I figured out that if you drank on top of a sore throat, you could still talk, you could still sing, and you could basically ignore it. So that time, yeah, that was triggering. Ibuprofen helped, but it didn't have that fuck it, I'm sick, I don't care feeling. Today though, in that grocery store, sitting there going, look like with my stomach, um, kind of feeling like I'm giving birth to something disgusting uh, other than a baby, I was thinking about how grateful I was in that moment to be sober because if I had been drunk or if I had been drinking, I don't know if I would have made anything worse. I don't know if I would have seen my stomach problem as it was legitimate. I might have just passed it off as a really sick drunk or a bad hangover. I basically never trusted my body and in this moment I didn't know what my body was doing but I had the feeling like, oh, this is going to pass, this is going to be okay. I'm going to get through this moment, and even if the worst does happen, I throw up in public, whatever. I'm not gonna make friends with the people in the paint store. And I at least have a better understanding about what my body is doing in that moment. Then I went to my friend's house, we did crafts. Again, that's something I would have never done when I was drinking because I would have made up an excuse, especially if I wasn't feeling good, just to stay in and drink. Because if there was any reason to get out of the house, it would have to be something beyond the benefit of being around social people, doing something creative. There would have, there would have had to have been a real reason to get me out of my living space, living space, because it was a disaster, in order to interact with the world. You know, and it wasn't like a super meaningful hangout, but it kind of was because I haven't had a lot of friends before I got sober. I had a lot of friends, a lot of acquaintances in the, in the improv community, people who cared about me, but I've not spent a whole lot of time just hanging out with people since I've left college. So that in general is just a very ther therapeutic thing to be around. Plus you're supposed to have new experiences to help heal your brain after substance abuse and heavy trauma, just to rewire your brain into showing you it's okay, you can exist in the world, nothing bad happened today, nothing bad might ha not happen tomorrow, that sort of thing. And then I went to, the last thing I did for today, I had three major things. It was, um, to do. <laughs> it was the case management thing. It was hanging out with friends, getting, doing errands, doing art, and then having this meeting that I was nervous about. I am sorry, one sec. Again, I don't know what's going on. Um, I had a meeting for an improv show that I'm directing for Pride. I'm setting up a, like a, an hour long performance with LGBTQIA, improvisers and we're going to do improv slightly based on the meaning of pride and queer activism. Kind of an Armando thing where someone suggests something, someone reads something out and we kind of play off of that. I used to have dreams and attempts in my drunkenness of being a leader in improv. That has been one of my main goals and feelings in my heart that I'm like born to do is to be a leader in improv, to be a director. To be a part of groups, yeah, but also to be the one running projects, coming up with ideas. And I had all of the ideas and the passion for the art, but actually like following through with a freaking planner and scheduling things and planning things and gathering people together was a pain in the butt for me, was almost impossible, became impossible. I had a show set up about two years ago that I had to schedule two days before the show opened because I just didn't have anything planned. I had no marketing done, nothing. I mean, the rehearsals had been set and everything like that, but I mean, you need to be a lot more clear headed in, if you're going to be in charge of marketing and promotion and being essentially the business manor, manager and creative director of group. It, it's a lot, especially in an art form that you kind of have to push people to care about. I still have a good relationship with the theater that I effed over two years ago, I'm actually doing it, this project for that theater, and they understand. I mean, that's not the case with every theater I've worked with, some are still pissed at me. But yeah, it felt so affirming to just be an adult, to not feel good, and to know what I had to do, and follow through and be productive, and finalize a lot of things that I didn't even know that I didn't have handled until that moment. I am so proud of myself with that, because that's another thing I would have just kind of let go when I was drunk, I would have convinced myself that I didn't have the ability to pull this off, that I wasn't ready. I'm freaking 28. I've been doing theater since I was eight. I've been doing comedy since my early 20s. I know what I need to do to be a good leader. It's hard. It's going to take a lot of effort, but now I actually believe 
that I can pull through it. I mean, we'll see. <laughs> I, t I could totally screw things up next week, but I really doubt it. So, I don't know if I would have done any of the things that I did today if I had been drinking. I just don't. Because it, it was all hard, it was stressful, I was anxious, I wasn't feeling good, but I still had a really good time. And I still was incredibly productive. I still did things, little tiny detailed things to major things that are going to help me in my long-term life goals and more, <laughs> more sooner uh, <laughs> or more precedent uh, stability. I don't know what I'm saying. Setting up doctor appointments and housing for the next year, you know, like shorter term, long-term stuff. These were just not things I had handled. And on top of that, I would have come home to an incredibly bad mess in the sink. I don't know if I would have had food for my cat. That's in really embarrassing and sick to say. I wouldn't have food in the fridge that was good for me. So I would have just not eaten or binged on something really bad. And now I'm taking the time to do this video blog and to set things up for the next week. So what I'm trying to say again is to people who are in early recovery, this is possible. Be kind and gentle with yourself because I am now in my 10th, now nearing 11th month of recovery. That being said, consecutively, I have 152 days, but I've been doing this journey since August, 2018. I am just now starting to believe in myself, have the confidence, go forward. In my fourth or fifth month of recovery, and I wasn't ready. It was too much at once. I tried to do the part-time job. I tried to be in a play and do improv and do stand-up. And I had a sober house. I had to go to three meetings a week. And I was an outpatient and blah, 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 like a bunch of stuff. And essentially, I was pushing myself to do all that to prove that how sober I could be and how stable and functional I could be. Now, proving myself is not my main goal at the beginning of every day. Forcing myself to have that perfect sober life is not my goal. My only goal right now is that I'm sober at the end of every day, no matter what that takes. And I'm grateful that it's turning out this way, that me staying sober at the end of the, of the day involves me being involved in projects that I really wanted to do for years and have been too sick mentally and physically to be able to do. So I'm gonna sign off. Hopefully I feel better tomorrow. Um, I do kind of love the little sick patches that I'm feeling, that I'm looking at right now. Once again, just be really kind with yourself as you go forward. Write a journal, allow yourself to be stressed, feel it. Know that more than anything, more than a part-time job, even though yes, you do mon need money, more than getting back into your dreams, your career, your goals, sobriety, okay? The most important thing in my life has been sobriety this time around. And that's involved in being homeless too. Housing was not my first priority because it was kind of interfering with my, with my sobriety to be able to, to have to focus on anything other than just day by day by day. Staying in a shelter was really helpful for me. I might be one of the only people where staying in a shelter with a bunch of drunks was really helpful for my sobriety. I don't recommend it for everyone, but it was better for me than the sober house, to be honest. Looking around, it kind of just solidified where our, I don't want to be and how hard I'm willing to work to keep going. So I'm going to sign off again. I have now written down my follow address somewhere. Um, you can look at my other videos. They are less meaningful than this one today. I went almost 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, follow me on Twitter at Kid Whiskers. And maybe I need to do this backwards. I don't know. I'll figure it out tomorrow. Um, Twitter at Kid Whiskers. Instagram at Kid Whiskers. At Kid Whiskers. Again, my name's Ally Ray, 150 days sober, they, them pronouns. Be kind with yourself.